What's up guys, Jason Richardson here with Guitar World. In this lesson today, I'm going to be discussing my approach to arpeggios, specifically the left hand, and how I eliminate barring from practically all shapes. It just, it helps a ton, in my opinion, with um, just eliminating any possibility of the notes ringing together, because the literal definition of an arpeggio is a broken chord, so no notes are supposed to ring together at all. And when you bar or roll your finger, there's always that slight chance that two notes could ring together, and that creates an interval. That's not an arpeggio. So by completely eliminating barring whatsoever, that just eliminates that chance of happening entirely. So here's a few basic examples. Again, this is, they're just normal arpeggio shapes, but it's the way that your left hand goes about doing them and the way that you need to practice them is what's important, not the shapes themselves. It's the left hand approach. This first shape is just your normal six string minor bar chord. So you would think that you would need to bar almost the entire thing because of the way that the chord is played. But there's, you kind of have to cram your fingers into one fret on the upper register of the arpeggio. But once you get the muscle memory down, like it's definitely intimidating at first, but once the muscle memory is in there, just the cleanliness of the arpeggio, in my opinion, that you can achieve is just much, much better. And you have to focus less on hugging with your right hand to keep those notes quiet and rolling your finger all the time. So the very beginning of the Peggio, you're gonna start with your first finger on five. Next finger is on the same string on eight with your pinky. And then instead of grabbing the next string up with your ring finger, you're gonna grab seven with your middle finger. So that way your ring finger is free to grab the next string up. And that's how you eliminate the barring with that first chunk of the arpeggio. And so on and so forth, after, after the seven, the next string up, you're going to grab your first finger with five. After that, instead of barring, we're gonna grab the next string up with your middle finger on five. And then the next string up, on the high string, you're gonna grab with your first finger on five again. And then the last note with your pinky on eight. And really, really, really slow. Here is the shape with no barring at all. The way this exercise works is you're essentially just going through the different inversions of all, all of this, the normal one, three, five minor arpeggios. And just with the way that this exercise works, this is the next arpeggio up. So after, after we ascend the first shape, we're gonna slide up to the 12th fret with our pinky and descend this minor inversion of it. So it's gonna be 12 on the high string, Eight on the same string with your first finger. You're gonna go down one string to 10. Down one more string to nine. Down one more string to 10. Down one more string to 12. Same string down to seven. And down one more string to eight. And then we play the first part or the first shape again, the six string minor bar chord. And then now, this next shape up, it's a bigger slide, all the way up to 17 on the high string. And then this is another shape that most people play where they have the barring with the ring finger. And this is one of my favorite ones that eliminating barring just made an insane amount cleaner for me. So, on 17, on the high E, with your pinky. And then you're gonna come down, same string to 12. Down one more string, 13. Down one more string to 14. 
Now, this is the part where people would usually bar both of these 14s right here. So instead of using your ring finger for both, you're going to grab this next 14 with your, with your middle finger. And then either, either your ring or your pinky on this next string down, whatever is more comfortable for you. I tend to hop back and forth between both for whatever reason. 15, down, one more string, and then 12. And then for the, this exercise, for everything to be sequential and to have perfect subdivisions to it, to a metronome, where you would come down one more string to, to 12. So this shape, without any barring, really slow. One of the best parts about this one for me, eliminating barring, is I noticed when I was first learning this shape, trying to bar it right here. Sometimes I would bar just a little bit too hard and accidentally fret the major third as opposed to the minor. That's not something exactly that you would want. But by eliminating barring entirely, that chance of that major third being in there is completely gone. Like it literally just can't happen because you're not even fretting that note whatsoever. So that's just, for me personally, that makes a massive difference. And then after, after we descend this shape in the exercise, you go back to the first shape again, the six string minor bar chord one. And then we play the same exact thing as this first string one, just up a whole octave. And jumping around like this just kind of gets you used to just going from one end of the fretboard all the way to the other, like, immediately. Especially if you're trying to get more into, like, the crazy arpeggio, like, Jason Becker-esque kind of stuff. Like, these, these types of exercises, like, going up and down all over the place really, is really good for muscle memory. And the other thing, too, with this exercise that's really important is you want to be alternate picking everything about it. You, um, you do not want to be sweeping this when you're first, when you're first learning it because you want the muscle memory to be building up for these shapes. And at that same time, you're just killing it with the alternate picking game, just stepping that up super hard. And then by the time you have these down, like you just cap out as fast as you can play them. <laughs> So now we're going to move on from minor to major shapes. The, uh, it's this pretty much the same approach, but the shapes are just, the fingering is slightly different, so I want to cover the basic major arpeggios as well for this exercise, because they're both good to be able to do, and you want to be able to do all the shapes. The first shape is based off just your normal six string major chord, major bar chord, just like the other one where it was your minor one. And so the first, the beginning part of this arpeggio is almost the exact same, where when we come up, so first string, or your first finger is going to be five, and then same string, nine, with your pinky. And then we're going to come up with our middle finger again as opposed to our ring to bar these two, these next two notes in the arpeggio. And then next string up with your ring finger. Next string up with your middle finger. And then now this right here, this chunk of this arpeggio is pretty much the only exception to the non-barring rule. Just because like there's pretty much like no like ergonomic or like comfortable way to individually like finger this specific three string inversion of a major arpeggio like i mean you you could but it's just like it doesn't make it doesn't really make sense just the way that it, you would have to do it like it's just like insanely uncomfortable so pretty much this is the only way or this is the only exception to the non-barring rule, and it's only just two strings, and it's at the top of the arpeggio, and your palm, you know, should be cover taking over that muting as well, especially when you get right up to the top string right there. So this is the one and only exception to the non-barring rule is the top end of this shape. <laughs> <laughs> 
So after that, after the middle finger on the major third, your first finger on five, and then you're gonna roll like a champion up to that next next string with the same finger. And then you take your pinky on the same string up to nine. And then that is the first shape of the major arpeggios. And the next chunk of the exercise is another inversion of the five string one of the major arpeggio. This one doesn't have any barring in it. So prob problem solved already. And then after that nine, we're gonna slide up to 12, descend to nine on the same string, come down one string to 10 with your middle finger, come down one more string to nine with your first finger, come down one more string with your ring finger to 11, down one more string with your pinky to 12, same string seven with your first finger, and then down one more string to nine, either your middle ring, whatever is most comfortable for you. I like, I like to use my middle finger for that one. And then we're gonna come back down to the first shape again. And then now this next one is a very, as a pretty important five string major arpeggio that is another one where people would be like, how, are you, how could you just not bar that? Because the whole thing is usually, people just typically roll their middle finger or their ring finger on the whole middle section of the shape. And this was the one that cleaned up the most for me by eliminating barring from the arpeggio. So we're gonna come up to 17 with our pinky and then same string down to 12 with our first finger, down one more string to 14 with our middle finger and down another string with our first finger, same all in 14, down one more string to 14 again with our middle finger down one more string to 16 with the pinky. And same string, first finger 12. So that's, that's the whole shape for this inversion, typically how people would play it. And, but for this exercise to get used to playing all the inversions in conjunction with one another, after, after the bottom of the arpeggio, you'll come down again with your middle finger on 12. And then we're back down to the first shape again. And then the next, the next part of the exercise is just the same thing, up an octave, and we descend. This guitar is in a drop G, so um, D standard, you know, D, G, C, F, A, D, and then the low string is a G. So this next exercise is just a, one example of a cool way to showcase how you can combine a major and a minor arpeggio. So this, this example is kind of a weird like up and down, inside out kind of arpeggio thing because I always like to find ways to do arpeggios that's not just strict up and down, just the, you know, the, the stereotypical stock. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you gotta start somewhere, but you get to the point where you kind of want to find different and new ways to do the same, the same arpeggios because there's only so many one three fives you can do over and over and over again. So this first shape is based off um, oh, the tuning that I'm in. It's going to be a D minor arpeggio. And it essentially just goes up and down and kind of inside out of your stereotypical, just normal up and down shapes. So it's going to start on the 19th fret up here, your first finger. And this first chunk looks like this. And then when you're coming back up, 
And that's just kind of a cool way to add the nine in there just for a second, just a cool way to transition from one chord to the next one. And then now we have this uh, this dominant arpeggio, and I think I add, a, I add a flat 13 in there as well at the bottom, and it looks like this slow. added a little flat nine there at the end too. So this this last exercise is an E minor arpeggio moving to a F sharp altered dominant chord. And again, make sure you're alternate picking everything about these. You don't want any notes ringing together. Actually, a good way to test that is if you just have a friend go like this while you're playing. And then if anything's ringing out, then you're not doing something right. So you gotta double check everything going on. That's actually, that's what my teacher would do, straight up. If to make sure that I was playing everything clean, he'd go like this while I was playing their arpeggios. And then if we heard anything, we have to figure out like, all right, what muting is not happening correctly right now? <clears throat> Helped a lot. <laughs> 